Hi guys, it's Alex here and today we're going to be continuing our coverage of the uh, Italian The Two Knights Defense from Black where I'm just setting up the position here where Black plays the move Knight to F6. Now we mentioned in the previous video that one of the key differences between playing Knight F6 and the move Bishop to C5 is that in the case of Bishop to C5 Black is controlling the G5 square which means that an early attack on the pawn on f7 is out of the question for white since he would lose the piece. However, in the two knights defense, this move knight g5 needs to be treated with, um, well, it needs to be given serious consideration. So uh, at first sight, it seems really, uh, really a very serious problem. Um, but it turns out that black has, a, a, well, two very interesting possibilities. The first somewhat dubious move if white knows how to react, we'll cover this uh, in a later video, is the so-called Traxler counterattack, simply ignoring the pawn. And we'll discuss this uh, quite soon. But uh, the major option that black has is to play pawn to d5 and simply block the scope of the bishop. Now white uh, always takes the pawn on d5. And now in fact the main line is this move, the so-called Polario defense, with the move knight to a5. The other less popular option is to move b5, which is the Ulbastad variation. Now, those of you who are unfamiliar with this uh, theory might be asking yourselves, well, what about taking the pawn on d5? Um, shouldn't that be sort of the main move? It seems like the obvious choice. And this is going to be the coverage for today's video. So after knight takes uh, d5, the reason why this move is quite unpopular is because uh, of two possibilities that white has. The first possibility is the crazy looking gambit of the knight with knight takes f7. The second possibility is the um, blast in the center with the move pawn to d4 which serves the purpose of protecting the knight on g5 here by activating the bishop on c1. Uh, Let's talk about these two moves. First of all, I want to say that um, black struggles against both of these options, in particular, in my opinion, against the so-called fried liver attack, knight takes f7. And therefore, these moves are rare guests. This uh, knight recapture on d5 is a very rare guest at uh, the grandmaster level. Uh, there's a lot of theory and a lot of computer lines, and we're, you know, this is outside the scope of... Um, of this particular uh, series. So what I've decided to do to give you a feel for um, both the lolly attack and the fried liver attack is I will show you a game um, in both of the variations. The first game that I wanted to show you is a game played by Bobby Fischer uh, with the move uh, d4 with the lolly attack in a simultaneous uh, game. Uh, Bobby Fischer actually played this, um, well I was able to find two games, so at least twice uh, Bobby Fischer chose this move in this position. Now, this is a dangerous weapon for white. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities for both sides in this line. Um, and uh, let's take a look at what black chose here. He chose the move bishop to e7. Seems like a very natural move, just striking at the knight on g5 and uh, threatening to castle. But it's actually leading to knight takes f7. And now, after king takes f7, Fischer played queen f3 check and we'll see that this is extremely similar to the positions that we get in the Fegatello uh, attack. Now with the king here and the knight on d5, black has to play the move king e6 in order to not lose his piece immediately. If he plays for example bishop to f6, now white has two pieces attacking the knight and he will recover his piece with an extra pawn and of course the black king will feel very unsafe. So black is forced into this uh, square on e6. Now Fischer continued with the move knight to c3, putting further pressure on this knight on d5. Uh, in fact, the only move really that m looks to me to make sense from this position is the move knight c to b4. The idea being that at least black is able to defend here but the king turns out it would be too exposed and after the move queen to e4, white's threat here on e5 in combination with the deadly pin 
in combination with the defense of the c2 pawn and in combination with possibilities of playing a3 and kicking away one of the defenders from the d5 point would just overwhelm black's uh, position and black would be lost so already in this position black is in, in some very very serious trouble let's see how black actually continued well he played the move bishop to b4 and now uh, white played bishop takes d5 check recovering his piece king d6 bishop takes c6 bishop takes c3 check b takes c3 and b takes c6 already the position is hopeless and one thing that i want to remark on in this position is that while some of you may have heard that opposite colored bishops tend to have a lot of drawing uh, tendencies this actually only holds true in the case of end games when the queens are on the board opposite colored bishops makes for uh, deadly attacking possibilities because in effect white can attack on the dark squares with one piece more than black has to defend because black's light squared bishop can never influence the dark squares and that makes him uh, especially vulnerable and of course with the king here on d6 it's really impossible to defend this position against a player of the caliber of bobby fisher fisher continued with bishop a3 check king e6 and now just calmly castled black centralized his queen to d5 the queen went to h5 and black played the move pawn to e4 trying to at least keep uh, the position a little bit closed for example if he took on d4 then there would be an open e file pawn to e4 fisher kept the queens on the board and created a threat of a check here on e7 so black played g5 to prevent that and fisher simply brought his queen back to h5 now that the queens uh, no longer eyeing each other black now played the move queen to f5 and fisher sought to open some lines against the enemy king with the move f3 after f3 black played queen g6 again desperately trying to exchange queens white dropped the queen back with check and black offered once again the queen exchange this time around fisher had seen a nice continuation and he said well it's okay i will allow the queen exchange and after king takes f5 play f takes e4 with uh, a double check if black were to drop the king back then the uh, number of pawns extra pawns that white has would decide the game so black actually took this uh, pawn on e4 but at this point the game was already uh, a forced mating sequence for those of you who want to test yourselves out test out your tactical abilities feel free to pause the video here otherwise i will show now the sequence white played rook a to e1 check black can only go to d5 white now played rook e5 check and we can see that the bishop is covering the d6 square so black could only go to c4 in fact he resigned in this position because if you go to c4 now white would have the move rook to c5 which is a really very nice uh, checkmate where we can see that most of white's uh, influence is on the dark squares but this pawn here on c2 is covering the remaining light squares so this is the lolly attack game by no means is this forced you could spend hours covering the lolly attack but i wanted to just give you an idea of what it was and give you an idea of the kind of dangers um, that can await an unprepared uh, black player let's now take the position back to uh, show you the the main game which is um, a very a game by two grandmasters in the fegatello or the so-called fried liver attack so let's take a look at that now so let's uh, show the starting moves again now we have this position here and after knight f6 we have the move knight to g5 this is the knight attack and uh, now black plays the move pawn to d5 pawn takes pawn knight takes pawn and in this position now we can we come to this possibility of knight takes f7 the game that i'm going to show you uh, was a game played between uh, sergey zagalko with the white pieces and simon agdestein 
uh, both 2600 plus grandmasters, so very, very strong grandmasters, uh, at the World Blitz, I believe 2016 World Blitz. So I guess that um, the black uh, player, who was uh, Grandmaster Agdestein, decided that he wanted to surprise his opponent by allowing this possibility and hoped that his opponent was not uh, so well prepared. So sometimes Grandmasters do this, they employ psychological tricks, they play something that they know is not so good, but uh, they hope that their opponent hasn't done their homework. In this case, um, Agdestein's opponent, Zagalko, had absolutely done his homework. Uh, so we'll see how this continued. Queen f3 check. Now black played the move king to e6 in order to defend the knight on d5. Anything else gives back the piece immediately. And now white played knight to c3, striking at the knight. Now here there are two ways to continue for black. The first one is to play knight c to e7, defending the knight on d5. And the other way is to play knight c to b4, similar to the uh, lolly attack game, in order to both defend the knight on d5 and in some instances put pressure here on c2. If knight c to b4, the best move for white is to castle. And now black would further fortify this piece with the move c6. And here white would play d4, calmly continuing down a piece, but banking on the long-term problems of the black king. Again, this is a position that could be studied, usually with the help of uh, computers in the case of master level players. Um, they will always uh, check computers for such heavily tactical positions. But I can tell you for now that um, white is really having a very big compensation for the piece. And um, probably with perfect play from both sides, black's position is objectively lost. Um, if not lost, then it's very close to it. Uh, let's, however, go back to see what um, Grandmaster Agustin chose here. He, in fact, in this position, chose rather than to play knight c to b4, he chose the retreat to e7. White ca castled, and now black played pawn to c6. This is very typical. Uh, this is the first typical idea you should keep in mind if you want to enter this uh, with the black uh, pieces to drop the knight either back to e7 or forward to b4 and then to support your extra piece. Because if black cannot hang on to the extra piece, then he may as well resign because he has gone venturing forward with his king all for the extra piece. So you have to try everything you can to hang on to it. White plays d4. Again, it's an idea that we've seen uh, already. And here probably already Black went a bit uh, wrong. As far as I know, the king to d7 uh, gives a little bit more chances of an eventual escape. But black chose the move king to d6 here. And after the move bishop to g5, black was already in quite some trouble. Black played the move bishop e6. You can see that king d6 is a very naturally desirable move because from d7 you are blocking the path of this bishop but from d6, at least, bishop to e6, it's a very human way to play this position, supporting further the, pawn on, the knight on d5 and trying to develop. White went rook fe1, putting further pressure on this pawn on e5, and so black took the pawn on d4. Now white played knight e4 check, and king went to c7, and now white played queen g3 check. Black really doesn't want to drop back to c8 because knight d6 check looks uh, quite unpleasant. And so black went to b6. And here already we can see that white uh, could cash in with a draw if he simply went queen b3 check. King c7 going to a5 is a little too adventurous. King c7 and now queen g3 check again. And we could see that uh, the position would be would be, uh, would be a draw. However, after, after this, in fact, uh, the play did actually uh, continue like this with a couple of checks being given. And then white started to lose a little bit the thread of the game. We have to remember it was only a, a blitz game, so it's hard to find the best moves. But I took a look at it, and if white had played here the move knight to c5, this would have been the most crushing move. Black would have two deadly threats to face. And so he would have to drop the bishop back to c8 to protect his bishop and to 
defend the pawn on b7. But now would come uh, not the only move, but the, the strongest move in this position, which is the beautiful move rook e6. The point is that if you take this uh, rook, not only is b7 undefended, but also the simplest path from a human perspective would just be to take on e6 and fork the queen and the king. So uh, therefore, black cannot take the rook. What's the idea behind this move? Well, it's simply controlling the d6 square. So now in this position, uh, the threat from, from white would actually be to play queen g3 check. Let's imagine the black played some silly move like h6. Then white would play queen g3 check. Now the king would have to go to b6. Now knight a4 check. The king would have to go to a5. And now uh, bishop would go to d2 check, inviting the king to capture this knight. And now queen b3 would simply be uh, game over. It would be checkmate. So we can see that the threats are really um, quite devastating here from, uh, from white after this move rook e6. So perhaps uh, already the position would be uh, indefensible. But uh, maybe the best idea from black would be to play this move a5. Uh, just so that if white gives a check on g3, black puts the king on b6. And if white gives a check on a4, then black can drop the king to a7 and hide there. But against this move, white could capture on d5, take on d5 with the queen is best. Bishop f4 check. Now we see the idea behind removing this knight on d5. And... Well, the black king has no squares available except d8, but now the king and the queen are on the same file and rook d6 check would be uh, simply game over. Black would have to lose his queen and now white would have a very good material situation and black's king is very, very unsafe. So this is just one of many thousands of games that have taken place over the years in the Fegatello and just one in the Lolly attack. Um, but I wanted to give you guys a bit of a flavor for both possibilities. I would say the moral of the story is that as black, if you want to play against very high level uh, players, if you're playing against them, it's probably not a good idea to allow either the Fegatello or the Lolly attack. As white, if you're prepared to uh, play very sharp and sacrifice a piece, if you're you know, uh, comfortable with sacrificing a piece early on, and being down a piece for the next few moves, safe in the knowledge that there is that your position is good, if you're comfortable with that, then go for the fried liver attack. If you want to play it a little bit more safe, you don't want to sacrifice a piece but still get a good position, then the lolly attack is the, is the way to go. Uh, other than that, that's it for me for this video. Uh, we'll cover some of the more main lines very soon, more, more serious lines, and um, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one.